Well, as you can see, I'm enjoying a Greek sunset right now, but I did not want to put off making this video because we are talking about procrastination and most importantly, how you can stop procrastinating and start getting more work done. So why is it important that we talk about this topic? Well, we pay a price every time we procrastinate. At best, it delays your results. At worst, it stops them entirely. Charles Dickens actually called procrastination the thief of time. So we pay a big price every time we procrastinate. But I actually think the biggest price we pay of all is actually the toll it takes on our self-esteem. It feels really yucky to say that we're going to do something and then keep telling ourselves, I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe next time. We keep putting it off. The cost there, is you actually stop trusting yourself and you pay a price of losing integrity with yourself every time you say that you're going to do something and don't follow through. So it's really important that we get on top of procrastination. Now, these are the invisible costs of procrastination and we pay them because they are invisible. But the fact is, if you really added up what procrastination is truly costing you, then, and you had to go and take that money out of an ATM machine every day, then that in itself would help you really like look at this situation differently. So think about it. Let's say you've been planning to launch an online program program. And let's say your goal for this online program was to make an extra five to 10,000 a month. Well, then every month you delay launching that, that's actually the price you're paying. But because it's invisible, you're not being asked to go and withdraw that some money from a bank account. It's easy to pretend to yourself that you're not paying that price. But there is a real price with procrastination. So make no mistake about that. So what actually is procrastination? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary before I came on to make this video, and it is described as the act of delaying or postponing something. So the bottom line is there's a result you want, but you're avoiding taking the action that would produce that result. So it might be that you want to get fit, but you're avoiding going out and doing the walk or run that you promised yourself you're going to do every morning. Or in business, maybe you want to grow an online community, but you're delaying publishing or producing content that would enable you to attract and nurture that community. Maybe you want to uh, launch a digital course, like the example I just gave you, but you're delaying getting started. So here's what I want to point out to you. In all of these instances, what you think is that you're delaying taking an action. But if you look at it closely, what you discover is what you're really avoiding is the feeling that you think would go along with that action. I call this creative avoidance, and it's something that I discovered 25 years ago when I first started teaching sales. Specifically, the type of sales I was teaching back then was cold calling. So this is picking up the phone, talking to an absolute stranger and trying to get them interested in what you have to offer. It's a very hard sales situation. It's a challenging sales situation. And unsurprisingly, lots of people wanted to avoid it. But it wasn't the act of picking up the phone. I mean, that's just a simple act. If you think about it, pick up the phone and dial. What they were actually avoiding was all of the feelings that were going along with that. So feeling inadequate, you know, having someone say, I'm not interested, not knowing how to respond or feeling embarrassed or feeling that they were going to be perceived in a way that they don't, didn't want to be perceived. So what they were really avoiding was not the action. It was the feeling that they thought would be produced as a result of the action. I see this time and time again. Creative avoidance is very common with the clients that I work with, coaches and consultants. And other ways it shows up is, let's say I have clients who are delaying or putting off doing a Facebook Live. And then when we look more closely, it's actually the feelings that they think they would have when they do that Facebook Live. I also have clients that when they come to me, they are putting off booking sales calls because they are feeling fearful about what might happen on those sales calls. The first thing is it's important to get really clear on what you are delaying or postponing. And so I've got some advice on how you do this. So the first thing, this is the most important thing of everything, which is do not judge yourself. If you're procrastinating, it means you're human. There is nothing wrong with you. Your human brain is designed to do three things. It is designed to seek pleasure, avoid pain and conserve energy. So you could see that procrastination is actually evidence that your human brain is working perfectly. So it, this is really important because often when we procrastinate, we then turn that into a story about ourselves. I'm lazy. I never follow through. What's wrong with me? I just can't get motivated. If you're saying any of those things, it is not going to help you solve procrastination. It's far better to, first thing is to recognize that this is just normal that you are doing this. It's normal that your brain is doing this. So the second step, once you've done that, is to know that there is wisdom in your procrastination. There are valuable lessons in there for you if you get curious and stay compassionate with yourself and really start to explore what is it that you're really avoiding. Once you've done that, you'll be able to identify what the feeling is you're really avoiding. You want to ask yourself questions like, okay, 
okay, so I've been planning to start my book, but I haven't taken the first step or I got started, but then I didn't follow through. What is the feeling that I'm really avoiding? What is the consequence of this action that I want to avoid? And sometimes these actually might be good results that we're afraid of. So it might be that you're frightened of writing the book or starting the book, because what if you become a best-selling, well-known author, and then people start making demands on you? So if you explore it, there will be something that you are truly avoiding. You just have to stay compassionate and curious and really explore that. Then the next thing is be willing to really feel that feeling. So this is where this is gets a bit ironic because here's the thing, the feeling that you want to avoid, you're already feeling it. So for example, when I had the clients that they didn't want to pick up the phone and call strangers because they were worried about being seen as pushy, they were already feeling pushy before they lifted the phone. And in fact, so it was already there. So what I encourage them to do, what I encourage you to do is really lean into that feeling. Just be willing to feel that feeling. Because the fact is, if you're willing to feel the feeling, the feeling will not kill you. But if you're willing to feel that, there's nothing to fear anymore. The moment you feel it, you don't have to avoid it any longer. And the fact of the matter is, you're already feeling it. You have to be feeling it at some level to know that you want to avoid it. You're feeling it, but you're resisting the feeling. This is an incredible thing when you're just willing to feel the feeling. It's just incredibly incredible to me how quickly that then sort of passes through. That feeling will dissolve. You'll let go of it. Really amazing. Be willing to feel that feeling. If you've been putting off scheduling a Facebook Live because you don't want to feel anxiety, notice that you're already feeling some level of anxiety, but you're resisting it. So what you have to do is just go, okay, I'm willing to feel this anxiety and just let it pass through and do that as many times as you need to. For some people, it just all goes in in one piece. Others, it might take longer, but just be willing to feel that feeling. You're no longer needing to avoid the action that would generate that feeling. So I hope this has helped. I'm going to come back again to talk more about specific strategies strategies for dealing with procrastination. Um, I also want to give a shout out. This video came about because it was requested by one of my viewers, Big Smokey, who specifically requested that I did a video on this today. So I hope that's helped you. Don't put off putting this into action. Go ahead and share below in a comment. What is it that you've been avoiding? What did you identify what the feeling is? Share your comments below and I look forward to seeing you on a future video. Take care.